Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. It's December 20th, 2015, as I make this video. It is five panicking days until Christmas morning. I spent much of the day yesterday at the mall, and I love the mall at Christmas. I love Christmas anyway. I'm an atheist. This is an atheist, egoist, anarchist church, but um, we are hugely ecumenical. Whatever you believe, you're welcome here. And I believe what I want to believe. I have no use for gods of any sort, but I love Christmas. Christmas as a Christian celebration, as a Roman Saturnalia, as a, a Greek observance of the temporary exile of Persephone, as a way of raising a fist to winter and say, you can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. I love Christmas. I had a wonderful time. I saw a zillion and one families. I love families. I saw a whole lot of pregnant bellies. And this really fills me with hope because we, we say, I believe that children are our future. That's a joke. Children are our future. You don't have to believe it. It's not a, it's not a topic of belief. Children are the future. And I like to see new babies emergent but I especially like to see new babies emerging into solid families. And I saw a lot of solid families. I saw a lot of well-loved children yesterday. And it was wonderful. It was really, truly, amazingly wonderful for me. Christmas is one of those holidays that um, Marxists and their unwitting familiars use to malign rational egoism because it's a holiday about giving it must be a holiday about self-sacrifice this is so nonsensical i invite you to go to the mall between now and christmas and watch the families and watch the way that they indulge their children and watch what they're getting out of it it's a reciprocal transaction it's not a sacrifice it's me giving to you because I love you as an expression of my love for you and me in return reaping your love for me as a result of that transaction. It is not self-sacrificial and it is not monetary. It's not monetized. A gift may be purchased, but a gift may be produced and a gift may be nothing other than a smile or a hug. It's not a monetary value. It's an emotional value. And to equate that sort of giving with the self-sacrifice that is continually demanded by Marxists and by the champions of indiscriminate charity, to equate those two things is an error. They're not at all alike. There is no love involved in either taxation or indiscriminate charity. There is no love involved because there is no direct relationship among the parties. Even if you are the kind of schmoo who likes to piss away your wealth on people who really mean nothing to you, you have no contact with those people. You have no direct contact with those people. And people who do those sorts of things by direct contact, well, more power to them. I think maybe I would quarrel with them about their values hierarchy, but it doesn't really matter if I do or don't. It's their values hierarchy. I don't get to dictate it to them. I don't get to change it because I might want to, and it's really none of my business. But it is my business to dispute the idea that actual giving among people who know and love each other is in some sense sacrificial. It is not. It is not self-sacrificial. To the contrary, it is self-aggrandizing. It is self-construction in action. You are pursuing your own values to the utmost, and you are pursuing them with the people that you value to the utmost. There couldn't be anything more egoistic than this. I mentioned last week that um, at some point I want to take up uh, an understanding of egoism that actually has something to do with the rational self-interest of a uh, complete human being. Someone who is fully living the human life. What would rational self-interest consist of and why are so many of the doctrines that we call egoism so hostile to that actual rational self-interest? I uh, 
on my about page on selffederation.com, I say I invented egoism, and this is uh, incited ire from people who fancy themselves to be egoists. And I'm not arguing with you, and I'm not really trying to insult you, but if you read Man Alive, you will get um, a complete description of the ontological facts that create egoism in human beings, that cause egoism to exist. And furthermore, we discuss how best to express and practice that egoism. This is the theme of today's Church of Splendor homily, Practical Egoism, Pursuing Your Values is Your Only Job. I wrote about this yesterday in a post on selfadoration.com about uh, the egoist, the appropriate egoist response to taxation, which is much alike to the appropriate egoist response to an insect infestation or a um, um, loss of property due to petty vandalism. If you invest more energy than that, in your opposition to taxation, then the amount of energy that you invest should be total. In other words, if you are not willing to engage in mortal combat in order to retain your property that the tax collector is trying to steal from you, if you're not willing to kill that tax collector in defense of your property, then you ought to be as phlegmatic about the tax, tax collector as you are about the crickets that you found eating your oatmeal. Yes, you're being preyed upon, but you're unwilling to burn your house down to get rid of the crickets, and you're unwilling to risk your life to get rid of the tax collector. These are essentially the same strategy, and your follow-up to those strategies should be exactly the same. Do what you're going to do and put it behind you, because you're not going to do anything else. And therefore, if you're going to stew about it, if you're going to steam about it, if you're going to put yourself into a uh, pretended rage as your expression of opposition to this predation, all the while never doing anything to actually stop it, then I think you're acting in self-destruction. You're making yourself miserable while doing nothing to divest yourself of that misery. I think that's an error. Your span of life is limited. You know, have no idea how long you'll live, but you know you will die someday. You are trading the time of your life in order to get what you want. The time of your life is your sole capital. Every other form of capital is an expression of the time of your life or somebody's life. And if you trade your life for less than you really want, if you get less than you really want, then you may have traded badly or luck may have been against you. There can be a whole lot of reasons why you don't get absolutely everything that you want. But if you are not pursuing your values as your only job all the time that you are awake and alive as a human being, then you are wasting your life. You are acting in self-destruction. This is what self-destruction literally is, is choosing misery when you can pursue happiness instead. And whether you're choosing misery over taxation or choosing misery over the bad behavior of some of your neighbors or choosing misery over other people's values and the different evaluation that they put on charity compared to you or whatever. It really doesn't matter. If you're stewing about other people, you're wasting your life because the only life you can change is your own from the inside out. So I don't know what more I'll say about egoism or when I'll get it said. I'll talk about egoism all the time. You can count on me to talk about egoism all the time and you may have to connect the dots into a coherent argument because... Um, I have no idea if or when I will get it done, but in the interim, I will give you eight words, eight simple words that you can use to defend your mind, to defend your time, to defend your life, to defend your soul capital from predations by other people and from literal self-sacrifice by yourself, sacrificing the time of your life for something that is of no value to you, that is self-sacrifice. I can shield you from all of that with eight simple words. You master these words and you call them to mind whenever you're wondering if you're doing what you should be doing. They will save your life. So my eight sa life-saving words are, in what way does this advance my interests? In what way does this advance my interests? In what way? Does this advance my interests? It's a simple question, so simple. 
but you stop yourself. You're doing something and you stop yourself and you wonder, hey, <laughs> am I really pursuing my own values to the utmost? In what way does this advance my interests? And if you can't come up with a satisfactory answer, pursue your own values instead. I have <laughs> so much more to say about this, about egoism from the inside out, about living your own life for its own sake, and not sacrificing your life to misery about other people. We'll take it up another day because it's Christmas, and I just want to celebrate Spring will come, but in the meantime, we will deck the halls with the colors of spring to remind ourselves that the future can always be better. This is the Church of Splendor. I wish you every splendor you can achieve in your life. My name is Greg Swan. I'll talk to you next week.